In this lecture, we will review the basic concepts of chirality within organic molecules as well as the structures of the 20 amino acids that are involved in protein synthesis. Carbohydrates will be one of the first topics that we'll cover during this term. The structures of this class of major macromolecules rely heavily on the formation of isomers and stereoisomers. Thus, we will begin by reviewing concepts of stereochemistry and chirality using the familiar structures of the amino acids in our example. This will give us the opportunity to review the 20 major amino acids that are used in protein biosynthesis, as they will also continue to be important in our discussions of metabolism. 19 of the 20 proteogenic amino acids are chiral in nature. This means that they are not superimposable with the mere image of themselves and that they contain four different functional groups bonded to the carbon center. In the case of the amino acid, this includes a carboxylic acid functional group, the amine functional group, the various R groups, and the hydrogen. Only glycine contains hydrogen as its R group does not have chirality. This chirality that is inherent to many organic molecules gives rise to a number of different types of isomers. Structural or constitutional isomers, shown on the left in blue, are the simplest type of isomer. They have the same molecular formula, but have different bonding patterns of the atoms within space. Stereoisomers, on the other hand, have the same molecular formula and also have the same bonded order of atoms within the structure. Only the spatial arrangement of the bonded atoms differ in stereoisomers. Stereoisomers can be further divided into two groups, the diastereomers and the enantiomers. Diastereomers are stereoisomers that are not related through a reflective operation. That means they are not mere images of each other. We will come back to this type of stereoisomer in more detail during our introduction to carbohydrates in the next section. Here we will focus a little more on the other type of stereoisomer, the enantiomer. Enantiomers are known as optical isomers and have mere images that are not superimposable. Enantiomers, as introduced in the last slide, are the mirror image versions of chiral molecules. They have the same molecular formulas and the same connection of the atoms in space. The mirror image versions, however, are not superimposable. However, they have physical properties that are nearly identical to one another, making it very difficult to tell them apart from one another or to separate from one another. Because of this nature, they are given special stereoisomer names called enantiomers, and in fact, the compounds themselves are given the same name. These molecules do differ in the way that they rotate plain polarized light and the way that they react and interact with biological molecules, such as receptors and enzymes. Molecules that rotate light in the right-handed direction are called dextrorotary, and they are given the D letter designation. Molecules that rotate light in the left-handed direction are called levorotary and are given an L letter designation to distinguish one enantiomer from the other. Notably, amino acids formed in nature are predominantly in the L conformation, while natural sugars occur in the D conformation. The D and L forms of alanine are shown here. Note that the D and L designations are specific terms used for the way a molecule rotates plain polarized light. It does not denote the absolute stereo configuration of a molecule. An absolute configuration refers to the spatial arrangement of the atoms of a chiral molecule or entity or group and its stereochemical description. These are given by the R or S designation, referring to rectus or sinister, respectively. The absolute configurations for a chiral molecule in pure form are most often obtained by X-ray crystallography. In the Kahn, Ingold, and Prelog system for naming chiral centers, the groups attached to the chiral center are ranked according to their atomic number with the highest atomic number receiving the highest priority. This is A in the diagram above. 
and the lowest atomic number receiving the lowest priority, D in the diagram above, is placed away or pointed away from the viewer to correctly orient the molecule for further evaluation. The path of priorities number 1, 2, and 3 corresponding to A, B, and C in the diagram above are then traced. If the path is clockwise, the chiral center is given the R designation, whereas if the path is counterclockwise, it is given the S designation. Note the core structure of the alpha amino acids which are incorporated into protein structures. There is a basic amine functional group attached to the alpha carbon followed by the carboxylic acid functional group. The alpha carbon also contains one bond to a hydrogen atom and the other to the variable R group that differs for each of the 20 different amino acids. These include the nonpolar hydrophobic amino acids Within this class are the aliphatic, straight-chain, or branch-chain amino acids, such as glycine, alanine, valine, leucine, and isoleucine. Number two, the aromatic amino acids include phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. And number three, unique nonpolar amino acids, proline and methionine. And the polar hydrophilic amino acids, Within this class are the number one polar uncharged amino acids such as cysteine, serine, threonine, asparagine, and glutamine. And number two, the acidic amino acids, aspartic acid and glutamic acid. And number three, the basic amino acids, arginine, lysine, and histidine. In the next section, we will begin to explore how the stereochemistry of carbohydrates, lipids, and other small organic molecules regulate enzyme activity, receptor activation, and biological responses. So before we leave this section, let's end with a brief review of the six major enzyme classes. You will be learning about these types of reactions throughout the term as they are used during metabolism of carbohydrates and lipids. The first are oxidoreductases, which function to add or remove electrons from substrates. And recall that both reactions need to occur. Electrons are removed from one molecule and donated to another. Oxidation and reduction always occur together. Transferases are enzymes that mediate the transfer of one functional group from a donor to an acceptor molecule. Hydrolases mediate the breakdown of substances by the addition of water to the compound. They also mediate the opposite reaction, dehydration synthesis, where water is removed from two molecules to join them together. All of the major macromolecules are synthesized and broken down using dehydration synthesis or hydrolysis, respectively. Lyases add or remove double bonds. Isomerases cause intramolecular rearrangements. Thus, the molecular formula of the compound stays the same. The molecule is just converted into another isomer. And finally, ligases use the energy of ATP to join two molecules together. We saw a ligase involved in sealing the phosphate sugar backbone of DNA. In the next section, we will begin learning about the structure, function, and metabolism of carbohydrates.